lot of viewers ask me which camera they should buy. I get that, it's a tough decision. Lots of choices and so many features and factors to consider that it can be overwhelming. And for most of us, a new camera with a lens or two adds up to a fairly significant purchase. But before you are overwhelmed by the desire to have a few new features and run down to the virtual or physical camera store, take stock of what you want, what you have, and what you need. If you're overwhelmed with camera lust, or even just camera envy, it's tough, I get it, cameras are cool devices, Capturing an image, savoring a time, or an event is a powerful way to save and to treasure an emotion or a moment. It connects us with our friends and our family. Kim and I have walls and books full of treasured photographs. So first, do you already have a camera? Do you have a camera phone? Are you using it? What's wrong with it? You should have good answers to these fundamental questions. If you have a camera, take it out and shoot with it. Not just for birthdays, but every day or at least every weekend. Go for a walk and look for photographs downtown in the park, at a concert, wherever your fancy takes you. And then figure out what about your camera or camera phone doesn't satisfy. Now for most of us, a smartphone, last year's model, even a camera from three or four years ago remains plenty capable. Take it out and use it more. Learn the tricks of photography, experiment, and keep looking at other photographers' pictures and taking your own to improve your skills. This is not about owning a great camera or mastering the dozens of settings or the multitude of features and functions. It's just about being a better photographer. And do it in situations where you're not afraid to fail. Because if you only take pictures at the important moments, that's exactly what will happen. You need to be familiar and comfortable to take great photos. A better camera won't improve your composition or your timing. That's what you bring an understanding of how to arrange the subjects and objects in your image and how to wait for the decisive moment. As you work on mastering those, you may also start to appreciate the shortcomings of your camera. So that's the time to ask, what will this new camera do that the old one won't? Every interchangeable lens camera sold in the last five years or so runs rings around any camera used by my photographic idols and heroes. They did so much and with so much less. So if you're a pro, maybe a few more frames a second makes a difference. A few milliseconds faster focus will help get your image on the front page tomorrow or will get you the shot that reminds the client why hiring a pro was the right choice. And unless you're working for National Geographic or taking product shots for a national brand, don't worry so much about quality. If you've got 16 megapixels, that's enough for anything but the largest size prints. Instead, worry about light. Think about lighting. In most cases, it's not the specific model of camera, the lens, or the settings that make a great photograph. It's the light. You don't take a great picture of the Eiffel Tower without studying the light, where and when it falls, and then, if necessary, waiting or returning at the right time to get the shot. Now, of course, I don't imagine for a minute that I'm really going to talk you out of buying a new camera. I know that's not how things work. So if you're going ahead, here's my best advice. And obviously, if you do have a specific photography goal in mind, time lapse, video, night sky, sports, make sure the camera has the features to support that. And check out that the camera will work the way you expect it to. There's lots of danger in the details. If you can't arrange for a trial weekend, I always download the manual and read the fine print. Now, if the feature set satisfies, then, and maybe it's obvious, your camera should fit your wallet. And I'd always skimp on the body and spend on the lens. The lens will last much longer. 
If my parents had been into photography and left me some old lenses, I'd probably be using them today. Now second, your camera should fit your hand comfortably. You're going to spend a lot of time holding it, both up to your face and at your waist. It's a really important thing, particularly if the camera is on the heavy side. And make sure the controls that you're going to use regularly are easily accessible and comfortably situated. If you're planning for fast, candid street shooting, make sure the on-off switch and the shutter are positioned for easy and quick activation. If you want to adjust the settings in manual mode with your eye in the viewfinder, make sure the camera is set up to do exactly that. And not just aperture and shutter, but meter mode, focus area, and drive mode. And then listen to your heart. If a brand or a design or some other aspect makes you fall in love with a camera, go with that. You should love your camera so much, you never think of leaving it at home. It should be like a puppy. When you see it, you should want to take it for a walk. It should bring you joy every time you see it. You'll never take a great picture with a camera that's sitting at home. Well, I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. And keep shooting until you've filled up your memory cards and drained your batteries. Now, comments below and please subscribe if you do that kind of thing.